So now that we've had 24 hours to digest everything that Apple announced and released during the Far Out event and the Apple hangover is now over, for lack of a better term, we can now talk about the actual iPhone 14 and why I personally think that this iPhone 14 lineup is actually one to skip. So without further ado, here are five reasons why I think you should actually forego the iPhone 14 lineup and maybe wait for that iPhone 15 or go with another phone for that matter. Let's talk about it. So reason number one has to be the chipset that Apple decided to put in both the iPhone 14 and the iPhone 14 Pro lineup. So with the iPhone 14s, we're actually keeping the same A15 Bionic that are on all the iPhone 13s and 13 Pros. So we're getting a one year old chip in iPhones that are supposedly going to be new in the iPhone 14 lineup. And apparently Apple is saying they're going to get an 18% boost in CPU and GPU power. But again, it's still the same A15 Bionic chip on the iPhone 14 and the iPhone 14 Plus. And then the A16 Bionic chip that's gonna be in the 14 Pro and the 14 Pro Max, you know, leaves some things to be desired still, right? It is that four nanometer process, so they were able to fit a little bit more in there, and they do promise up to 40% extra GPU and CPU power, but that's the key word, it's up to 40%, and we're gonna have to wait to see and get those iPhones in the studio to see if we see any real world difference, because yes, the Geekbench scores do show that the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max will be more powerful, but Geekbench scores aren't the best way to really show you guys how an iPhone or how a phone for that matter will react and will perform on a day-to-day -day basis. Reason number two has to be the lack of innovation on the iPhone 14 models. So as we saw, Apple completely got rid of the mini in the iPhone 14 lineup, and we went with the regular iPhone 14 at 6.1 inches and then the iPhone 14 Plus at 6.7 inches. And these phones look identical to the ones from the 13, and also they look identical to the 12s. So there's literally no innovation on the front side, back side, on the rails. Aside from a new colorway and that new blue color for the iPhone 14 and 14 Plus, there is nothing visually different about the iPhone compared to the 13. And then compared to the 12, the only thing that's different is the actual way that the cameras are orientated. So instead of being diagonal, they're just right over each other like they were on the 11 and the 10 and the 10s. So from a visual standpoint, the iPhone 14s, no real visual difference compared to last year's and a two-year-old model for that matter. Reason number three, we're gonna talk about this category in terms of niche upgrades because Apple, they spent you know about 40 minutes talking about the new iPhones and all the new features from a hardware and a software perspective. And honestly, it looked really cool in the moment, right? We had this new satellite feature, so you could literally never get lost no matter what situation you're in. We have the crash detection feature, which is gonna be amazing when you are in a car accident, you know, God forbid something does happen and that does come in handy. And then there were other little things like action mode inside of the new cameras. Then also, of course, the island, the dynamic island that was, that was added to the 14 Pro and Pro Max. But the reason I'm putting this in a negative space is because these are all very niche situations. So unless you are that hiker, unless you are that person that goes off the grid a lot, because I am not one of those people, I am on the grid pretty much 100% of the time. And I know that a lot of people are. So that satellite feature, a is going to be a very niche use case situation which most people aren't going to want to use because if you are in that situation then it's probably not a good thing to be in but then also two it's kind of like sos as a service in the fine print apple did state that this is going to be a service provided by apple so you get it two years for free with any iphone 14 and 14 pro purchase but then after that there's going to be a cost associated with that and I promise you it's not going to be cheap because think about what that service is providing. Like if you're out in the wilderness, in the remote world, in a forest, in a desert, you know, in a situation where there's no data and no cell signal, then you're gonna have to get a satellite signal to get some sort of chopper or like four wheeler or some sort of emergency services to get to that point, which is not going to be cheap. So having this as a service is going to be relatively expensive in my opinion. This is not gonna be a 499 or 999 subscription model. Maybe Apple will bundle it into some sort of like wilderness package inside of Apple One, but overall, I think, mark my words, this is gonna be like $100 a month kind of subscription service if you wanna have this turned on. So that's what I mean when it comes to niche upgrades, right? The crash detection, of course, it's a great feature, but again, hopefully you don't have to be in that situation. And already most Apple Watches from the Series 5 and up will be able to detect a hard fall or a hard crash, even though it isn't labeled as crash detection. So keep that in mind when it comes to these niche upgrades. Yes, Apple did provide some cool kind of cinematography and some cool ads to really make you feel like you needed this in order to quote unquote stay alive. But overall, these are very niche upgrades. And then when it comes to the dynamic island, yes, it's a beautiful thing to see, especially how well Apple is adapting all the different notification styles inside of that island and the way that they're using it. But again, 
every iPhone that supports iOS 16 is still gonna be able to have those live notifications on the bottom of the screen. We're still gonna be able to functionally see all of our notifications in real time. So this is not really a function, it's more of a form thing. So if you like how pretty it looks, then by all means, jump on it, go to the dynamic island, you know, plant your flag there and enjoy it. But from a function standpoint, you're not really gonna get much more compared to any other iPhone that's running iOS 16. The next category is going to be the eSIM and then the lightning cable. So I wanna put this in the same category because it involves kind of like ports and the removal of ports on the outside of the iPhone. So in the US, and this is only for the US, Apple's iPhone 14 lineup, the entire lineup is going to come with eSIM only, which means you cannot remove the SIM card. There's no physical SIM card. So if you're somebody that swaps between 18 phones a year and you use the same SIM card, that's gonna be it, right? Good luck being able to switch between eSIMs and between carriers and going from a phone that's eSIM to a phone that has a regular SIM card. It's gonna be a tough one, especially for people that buy the iPhone 14 to then return it because they wanna try it out for a week or two. It's gonna be a little bit different when it comes to carriers because you're gonna have to upgrade to an eSIM and then if you wanna return the phone, you're gonna have to downgrade and get a physical SIM card again to put inside of an iPhone 13 or whatever you were using before. So eSIM only is kind of weird to me, but again, it's only US based. If you are buying it anywhere else in the world, it will have a SIM card tray, so keep that in mind. And then also to talk about the lightning cable, with the iPhone 15, we're supposed to be getting a USB-C cable and a USB-C port and foregoing the lightning cable. So those are all big negatives because if we wait another 12 months, Apple's going to have to either totally remove the lightning port or add USB-C. So keep that in mind when trying to purchase the iPhone 14s. And then the final reason as to why I think we should actually skip this iPhone 14 altogether is now that the iPhone 14 and 14 Pros are out, the price reduction on the rest of the iPhone lineup is actually amazing. So now the iPhone lineup looks a little bit like this. You have the iPhone SE sitting at $429 with the A15 Bionic chip in there. So everything is gonna work very, very quickly. Sure, the battery life isn't great. You know, the hardware isn't amazing, but if you just want an iPhone that works and works well with all the peripherals that Apple includes, that is going to be your cheapest entry point if you wanna go with a brand new phone. But then they're also still selling the iPhone 12 for $599, and then they're also still selling the 13 mini, the 13, and then we get into the 14 lineup. So in my opinion, I think the best purchase is actually a regular iPhone 13, just because the battery life upgrades were substantial compared to the 12. But if you wanna get the same form factor with the same cool design, the same railings, and you wanna go as cheap as possible, the iPhone 12 is sitting pretty at 599, and I think you can get that if you spread it out over two years for $12 a month, even less. So I think that is a much better purchase because from a camera standpoint, cameras are still 90% of the way there. Battery life isn't amazing on those phones, so keep that in mind, but you still get MagSafe, you still get the new design, you get new, the cool colorway. So it all works pretty well from an iPhone 12 lineup and it looks great. And overall, you would be very, very happy, especially if you're coming from an iPhone 6 or iPhone 8 or something a little bit older. So that is my final reason, right? It's the price reduction just from a retail standpoint. Now, I'm not even talking about the secondary market, the refurbished market. Like you could probably pick up iPhone 10s and iPhone 11s for even cheaper, iPhone XRs. And I do believe that the iPhone XR will replace the iPhone SE at some point. So the new iPhone SE will be an iPhone XR body, but that's not coming until later down the line. But keep that in mind, the Apple now has a bunch of phones at a bunch of different price points where you don't need to get an iPhone 14 Pro. So you know who you are if you need the iPhone 14s and the 14 Pros and you need the features that come with those phones. But for the most part, for 99% of people, go with a cheaper iPhone, go with something like the iPhone 12, the iPhone 13, even the 13 mini is a great price because it still has the A15 Bionic and it starts at 599. Sure, battery life isn't amazing, but for an iPhone with all that power to be able to run everything that you wanna run on it, be your mobile photography station and everything like that, the iPhone 13 mini is a great purchase. And get them while you still can because after that falls off the lineup, that'll be the last mini phone Apple provides. But those are my five reasons to avoid the iPhone 14. You know, there's a price barrier that's kind of expensive. It feels like Apple's kind of making you go to the iPhone 14 Pro route if you wanna get any new features. So get yourself an older iPhone if you do wanna get something new because again, those are still directly from Apple. But that being said, we still will be getting the iPhone 14 and the 14 Pros in the studio to test out, compare it to last year's model, compare it to the 12s, and see if it is actually worth your money because again, the 14 Pro Max starts at $1,100 for 128 gigs. And if you wanna to go to a terabyte, you're almost spending $2,000 on a cell phone. And I know most people aren't upgrading every year, but if right now there is no real justification to go from the 13 Pro to the 14 Pro, unless you're looking at strictly aesthetics and that dynamic island. But that's gonna do it for this video. If you guys did make it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below. And then also leave a comment down below which iPhone you have, where are you coming from? Are you gonna to upgrade to these 14s? Are you gonna wait for the 15 to come out with USB-C? 
always curious to know what your situation is. And also, Apple's probably gonna have an event in October releasing iPads and Macs. So keep that in mind if you're trying to save up some money for some new Apple products. But that's gonna do it. If you guys do wanna watch some more videos of iPhone 14, Apple Watch Ultra, and AirPods 2, click on one of these videos right here. But I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here. Peace.